Thanks for watching this episode of BibleMountain.com. This episode is part of a series of studies on the book of Job called, Why Do People Suffer? In this episode, we will answer the question, Does Poverty Indicate Sin? Let's start with some context. The book of Job tells us about a man named Job who lived around 2000 BC. Job lived roughly the same time Abraham lived, which was after Adam and Noah, but before Moses, David, Daniel, and Jesus. At the beginning of Job's story, Job was healthy, wealthy, and wise. But then Satan destroyed everything Job owned, killed Job's children, and ruined Job's health. Three friends named Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar came to visit Job and comfort him. They had a long discussion with Job about his misfortune. Job spoke first, then Eliphaz, then Job, then Bildad, then Job, then Zophar, then Job again, and this pattern kept repeating. Essentially, Job's friends tried to convince Job he was suffering because he had sinned, but Job kept insisting he was innocent. Towards the end, a man named Elihu offered his input, and then at the very end, Yahweh spoke the final word on Job's situation, and Job's health, wealth, and family were restored. Throughout this dialogue, Job's friends used various arguments per to persuade Job he was suffering because he had sinned. In this episode, we are going to look at Eliphaz's speech recorded in Job 15, in which Eliphaz tried to persuade Job that wicked people never prosper. Let's start Job 15, verse 1. Then Eliphaz the Temanite responded. Notice Eliphaz was the one speaking. Notice the word responded. Job was the one speaking in the previous chapter, Thus, we conclude here, Eliphaz was speaking primarily to Job. Verse 2. Should a wise man answer with windy knowledge and fill himself with the east wind? Should he argue with useless talk or with words which are not profitable? Notice Eliphaz started with questions. There are actually nine questions in the first 14 verses. These two questions were rhetorical. The answer is no. A wise person should not engage in useless talk. I am not sure if Eliphaz was saying he himself was wise, therefore he should probably not respond to Job, or if he was saying Job's windy talk proved that Job was not wise. Next, Eliphaz openly criticized Job. Verse 4. Indeed, you do away with reverence and hinder meditation before God. For your guilt teaches your mouth, and you choose the language of the crafty. Your own mouth condemns you, and not I and your own lips testify against you. Then Eliphaz asked more questions. Again, these were rhetorical questions. These were intended to criticize Job. Verse 7. Were you the first man to be born, or were you brought forth before the hills? Do you hear the secret counsel of God and limit wisdom to yourself? What do you know that we do not know? What do you understand that we do not? Both the gray-haired and the aged are among us, older than your father. Are the consolations of God too small for you, even the words spoken gently with you? Why does your heart carry you away, and why do your eyes flash? That you should turn your spirit against God and allow such words to go out of your mouth. Verse 13 was a strong accusation and condemnation. Verse 14. What is man that he should be pure, or he who is born of a woman that he should be righteous? Behold, God puts no trust in his holy ones, and the heavens are not pure in his sight. How much less a man who is detestable and corrupt, man who drinks iniquity like water. I will tell you, listen to me, and what I have seen I will also declare. What wise men have told and have not concealed from their fathers to whom alone the land was given, and no alien passed among them. Up to this point, everything Eliphaz said was merely an introduction. Beginning with verse 20, Eliphaz started to make his main point. Notice Eliphaz was describing what he thought is the plight of the wicked. Basically, Eliphaz believed wicked people have a miserable life. Verse 20, The wicked man writhes in pain all his days, and numbered are the years stored up for the ruthless. Sounds of terror are in his ears, while at peace the destroyer comes upon him. 
The wicked does not believe that he will return from darkness, and he is destined for the sword. The wicked wanders about for food, saying, Where is it? He knows that a day of darkness is at hand. Distress and anguish terrify him. They overpower him like a king ready for the attack. Notice verse 25 starts with the word, Because. This was Eliphaz's belief as to why the wicked suffer. Verse 25, Because the wicked has stretched out his hand against God and conducts himself arrogantly against the Almighty. The wicked rushes headlong at God with his massive shield. For he has covered his face with his fat and made his thighs heavy with flesh. And then Eliphaz resumed his description of the sufferings of the wicked. Notice the theme of poverty through these verses. Verse 28, the wicked has lived in desolate cities, in houses no one would inhabit, which are destined to become ruins. The wicked will not become rich, nor will his wealth endure, and his grain will not bend down to the ground. He will not escape from darkness, the flame will wither his shoots, and by the breath of his mouth he will go away. Let him not trust in emptiness, deceiving himself, for emptiness will be his reward. It will be accomplished before his time, and his palm branch will not be green. The wicked will drop off his unripe grape like the vine, and will cast off his flower like the olive tree. For the company of the godless is barren, and fire consumes the tents of the corrupt. The godless conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity, and their mind prepares deception. That is the end of Eliphaz's speech. Let's review his beliefs about the wicked. Verse 20, the wicked man writhes in pain all his days, and numbered are the years stored up for the ruthless. Notice the word all in verse 20. Eliphaz said the wicked man writhes all his days. Verse 29, the wicked will not become rich, nor will his wealth endure, and his grain will not bend down to the ground. Notice the negative words in verse 29. Eliphaz said the wicked will not become rich, and his grain will not bend to the ground. A stalk of grain bends to the ground when the head is heavy with many kernels of grain. If the stalk is not bending toward the ground, then there is little or no grain. In other words, Eliphaz claimed wicked people never prosper. Is this true? Before we answer that, let's consider the ramifications. If it is true that wicked people never prosper, then prosperity would prove a person's righteousness and poverty would indicate sinfulness. Eliphaz was trying to convince Job he had lost everything because of sin. If that was true, then poverty in our lives would also indicate sin. Let's consider Psalm 73. Verse 1. Surely God is good to Israel, to those who are pure in heart. But as for me, my feet came close to stumbling, my steps had almost slipped. Now notice the next two verses. For I was envious of the arrogant as I saw the prosperity of the wicked. For there are no pains in their death, and their body is fat. And now let's look at verse 12. Behold, these are the wicked, and always at ease, they, the wicked, have increased in wealth. Asaph wrote this under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, and he clearly indicated there are wicked people who prosper. Let's look also at Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 15. I have seen everything during my lifetime of futility. There is a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness. In chapter 8, verse 14. There is futility which is done on the earth. That is, there are righteous people to whom it happens according to the deeds of the wicked. On the other hand, there are evil men to whom it happens according to the deeds of the righteous. I say that this too is futility. Solomon also wrote these verses under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. These verses teach us sometimes wicked people do prosper. That brings us back to this question. Does poverty indicate sin? The answer is no. Poverty does not indicate sin. There may be some people who are poor because of sin or bad choices, but poverty itself does not prove there is sin. Just as Eliphaz and his friends should not have concluded Job's poverty indicated sin in his life, so too we should not look at someone's poverty and conclude they are suffering because of sin.